shot a man last week. In the back. I miss it now. It was really interesting. Still, I'm not going to get depressed about it. You have to look to the future. To have something like that under your belt can be quite useful. You never know when you may be called upon to repeat the experience. It wasn't in the line of duty. I wasn't a policewoman or someone who takes violence in their stride. It was with a harpoon gun, actually. But it definitely wasn't an accident. My decision to kill was arrived at only after a visible tussle with my conscience. I had to make it plain that once I'd pulled the trigger, things would never be the same again. This was a woman at the crossroads. It wasn't crossroads, of course. <laughs> they don't shoot people in crossroads at any rate. Not with harpoon guns. If somebody did get shot, it would be the weapon more suited to the motel ambiance. I have been in crossroads, though, actually. It was in an episode involving a fork lunch. At least they told me it was a fork lunch. The script said it was a finger buffet. I said to the floor manager, I said, Rex, are you on cans? Because I'd like some direction on this point. Are we toying or are we tucking in? He said, forget it. We're losing the food anyway. I was playing woman in a mosh coat. A guest at a wedding reception, and I was scheduled just to be in that one episode. However, <laughs> in my performance, I tried to suggest that I'd taken a fancy to the hotel in the hopes that I might catch the director's eye. And he'd have me stay on after the fork lunch for the following episode, which involved a full-blown weekend. So I acted an interest in the soft furnishings running my fingers over the formica and admiring the carpet on the walls. Only Rex came over to say that they'd put me in a musquash coat to suggest that I was a sophisticated woman. Could I try and look as if I was more at home in a three-star motel? I wasn't at home in that sort of motel, I can tell you. I said to the man I'd been put next to, who I assumed to be my husband, I said curtains in orange nylon with no place mats. It's not even a veneer of civilization. He said, don't talk to me about orange nylon. I was on a jury once that sentenced Richard Attenborough to death. We've been told to indulge in simulated cocktail chit-chat so we weren't being unprofessional, talking. That is something I pride myself on, actually. I'm a professional to my fingertips. Whatever it is I'm doing, even if it's just a walk-on, I must, must, must get involved. <laughs> right up to the hilt. I can't help it. People who know me tell me I'm a very serious person, only it's funny. I never get to do serious parts. The parts that I get offered tend to be fun-loving girls who take life as it comes and aren't afraid of a good time should the opportunity arise, type of thing. I'd call them vivacious. I didn't carry over tones of the outdoor life. In a nutshell, I play the kind of girl who's very much at home on a bar stool and seldom has to light her own cigarette. That couldn't be further from me, because for a start, I'm not a smoker. I could, if the part required it. I'm a professional. And you have to have as many strings to your bow as you can in this game. Having said that, I'm not a natural smoker. <laughs> What's more, I surprised my friends by not being much of a party-goer either. I'd rather curl it with a book, quite frankly. However, this particular party, I made an exception. The thing was, I'd met this ex-graphic designer who was quitting the rat race and going off to Zimbabwe. And he was having a little farewell to in the flat of an air hostess friends of his in Mitcham. Would I go? I thought, well... It's not every day you get somebody going off to Zimbabwe. So I said yes. And I'm glad I did. Because that's how I got the audition. Now, my hobby is people. I collect people. So when I saw this interesting looking man in the corner, the next thing is I find myself talking to him. I said, you look like an interesting person. I'm interested in interesting people, hello. 
He said, hello. I said, what do you do? He said, I'm in film. I said, oh, that's interesting. Anything in the pipeline? He said, as a matter of fact, yes. And he goes on to tell me about this project he's involved in making videos for the overseas market, targeted chiefly on West Germany. I said, are you the producer? He said, no, but I'm on the production side. The name's Spud. I said, Spud? That's an interesting name. <laughs> Mine's Leslie. He said, as it happens, Leslie, we've got a bit of a problem at the moment. Our main girls had to drop out because their backs packed in. Are you an actress? I said, well, Spud, it's interesting you should ask because as a matter of fact, I am. He said, will you excuse me one moment, Leslie? I said, why, Spud, where are you going? He said, I'm going to go away, Leslie. And make one phone call. <laughs> it transpires. <laughs> the director is seeing possible replacements the very next day at an address in West London. Spud said, it's interesting because I'm based in Ealing. I said, isn't that West London? He said, it is. Where's your stamping ground? I said, Bromley. For my sins. He said, that's a farish cry. Why not bed down at my place? I said, thank you, kind sir. But I didn't fall off the Christmas tree yesterday. He said, Leslie. I've got a son studying hotel management and a daughter with one kidney. Besides... My sister-in-law's staying over. She's come up for the ideal home exhibition. The penny began to drop when I saw the tattoo. My experience of tattoos is that they're generally confined to the lower echelons and when I saw the vest, it had electrician written all over it. I never even seen the sister-in-law. Still traipsing round Olympia. Probably. I know a thing about personality. There's a chapter about it in this book I'm reading. It's by an American. They're the experts where personality is concerned. The Americans. They've got it down to a fine art. It makes a big thing of interviews, so I was able to test it out. The director's not very old. Blue suit, tie loose, sleeves turned back. I put him down as a university type. Says his name was Simon, which I instantly committed to memory. That's one of the points in the book. Purpose and use of name. He said, forgive this crazy time. I said, I'm sorry, Simon. He said, like 9.30 in the morning. I said, Simon. The day begins when the day begins. You're the director. He said, yes, well, can you tell me what you've done? I said, where well, you may have seen me. Simon is Tess. Roman Polanski. I played Chloe. I don't remember her, he said. She in the book? I said, book? Simon? This is Tess. Roman Polanski. Chloe was on the back of the farm cart wearing the shawl. The shawl was original 19th century embroidery, all hand on. Do you know Roman, Simon? He said, not personally, no. I said, physically, he's quite small. But we had a very good working relationship. Very open. He said that was good. Because Travis in the film was very open. I said, Travis? That's an interesting name. He said, yes. She's an interesting character. She spends most of the film on the deck of a yacht. I said, yacht? That's interesting, Simon. My brother-in-law has a small powerboat berthed at Ipswich. He said, well, snap. I said, yes. It's a small world. 
He said in an ideal world, Leslie, I'd be happy to sit chatting all day, but I have a very tight schedule. And although it's only 9.30 in the morning, can I see you in your bra and panties? I said 9.30 in the morning, 10.30 at night. We're both professionals, Simon. But, I said, can we put another bar on? Because if we don't, you won't be able to tell my tits from goose pimples. He had to smile. That was another of the sections in the book. Humour. The usefulness of in breaking the ice. When I got my things off, he said, well, you've passed the physical. Now the oral. Do you play chess? I said, chess, Simon? Do you mean the musical? He said, no, the game. I said, as a matter of fact, Simon, I don't. Is that a problem? He said, not if you water ski. Travis is fundamentally an outdoor girl, but we thought it might be fun to make her an intellectual on the side. I said, well, Simon, I am happy to learn both chess and water skiing, but could I make a suggestion? Reading generally indicates a studious temperament, and I'm a very convincing reader, I said, because it's something I frequently do in real life. I could tell he was impressed. And so I said, another thought, Simon, would be to kit Travis out in glasses. Spectacles, Simon. These days they are not unbecoming, and if you put Travis in spectacles with something in paperback, that says it all. He said, you've been most helpful. I said the paperback could be something about the environment. Or, if you want to maintain the water skiing theme, something about water skiing and the environment. I mean... Blake Windermere. <laughs> he was showing me out by this point, but I said, one last thought, Simon, and that is a briefcase. Put Travis in a bikini and give her a briefcase and you've got the best of every possible world. He said, you've been most helpful. You've given me a lot of ideas. I said goodbye, Simon. I hope we can work together. The drill for saying goodbye is you take the person's hand, you put your hand over theirs, you clasp it warmly, while at the same time looking into their eyes, smiling and reiterating their name. Lodges you in their mind, apparently. So I did all that, only going downstairs, I had another thought and I popped back. He was on the phone. You won't believe this, he was saying. I said, don't hang up, Simon. Only I just wanted to make it crystal clear that when I said briefcase, I didn't mean one of the old-fashioned type ones. There are new briefcases now that open up and turn into a mini writing desk. Being an up-to-the-minute girl, that would probably be the type of briefcase Travis would have. <laughs> she could be sitting there in a wet bikini with a briefcase open on her knee. I've never seen that on screen, so it would be some kind of first. Ciao, Simon. Take care. That was last Friday. <laughs> the book's got charts where you can check your interview score. Number 75. Very good to excellent. Actually, I'm surprised they haven't telephoned. I think this frock wasn't made for me. I said to Scott, whose wardrobe, she 